Did you use like hmm? box of matches to set yourself on fire? No. <laughs> it's cool. I got this nice warm podcast sweatshirt on. You have uh, Mrs. Raff. All right. All right. Ready? Yes. We're up and running. And five, four, three, two. Hello and welcome to the Freemasons podcast with your hosts, right? Worship brother George Mudry, worship brother Joe, worship brother Ken, brother Raff. Uh, yep, yeah, we we drag Rafferty up here today. And this episode is going to be episode one sixty three, and it's going to they're going to be talking to a uh, brother across the pond, correct? Yes, that's correct. And you, uh, he, you're part of the United Grand Lodge of England. Yes, brother. And uh, we are talking to brother Salman Sheik. 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 I told you I was going to do it. I told you. <laughs> I was going to do it. it five times, too. I know. <laughs> I did. I practiced before. Eight, I <laughs> and uh, Rick Mott, um, his experience in Freemasonry as a Muslim brother. But first, we got to get into some stuff. And uh, being that I've already butchered one name, we're going to turn the likes over to Joe. Yeah. So we've, I've got the uh, Facebook likes here. I've got uh, James L. Purvis the Fourth, got Ernest Kemp, Tom Morawite, Daniel Rodriguez, Craig Ussery, Paul Bradley, and last but not least, Jeremy Griggs. Brother Ken, yeah, we've Instagram. got a few new ones for Instagram this week. Thankfully, we've got Ryan Carp, Travis Vincent, Corey Robinson, Jason Wigant, Gabriel Shank. Chris Grizzle, awesome name, and Electronic Probability, my personal favorite. <laughs> Thank you, friends and brothers. YouTube, we have Casey Kasuki. We'll go with that. <laughs> Joseph B. Decker Jr. Uh, and Charles M. Buchanan, who also wrote uh, on our episode where I did, uh, was originally Patreon, it was released to YouTube. Uh, and it was the Patreon episode I talked about the St. Thomas of Akon, which is an appending body of Knights Templar. Uh, he says, greetings from Baldwin Chapter number 99, Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Oh, cool. He is a worthy master, which is the right. so St. Thomas of Akon. St. Thomas of Akon. There too. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, it's yeah. actually, uh, it's English, actually. It came from Britain. Cool. But anyway, uh, let's do our toast. Joe, lead it. Brothers, right hand to arms. Two arms. arms. Ready. 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 Aim. 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 Fire could fire. Fire all. Together, brothers. Vivat. 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 It's much different doing it's this with hot coffee. Yeah. No. No. <laughs> Careful. <laughs> all right. But, uh, I think that's all we got for housekeeping, correct? I believe so. That's all, all right. I know. All right. So, uh, Brother Shake, let's get into your Masonic career. Let's start off with this. What got you involved in Freemasonry? What made you, what got you interested? And how did you find the door? And then we'll talk about your uh, your experience and your degrees. And again, we, we, we uh, adhere to the... We have to be circumspect. Yeah. Yes. No we, secrets. <laughs> no secrets get sure. exposed. We mostly just look and ask you, like, uh, oh. you know, when they told you to divest yourself, did you shit your pants or what happened? But start off with uh, what got you involved in Freemasonry? What got you interested in Freemasonry? Sure. So coming over to America at a young age, I was at five years old. I always saw the world in a different way. And I, I knew there was more to the world that, that, than it was originally taught to us. So I spent my time in Cleveland, Ohio. I had a beautiful teacher from India, took me under his wing and taught me English. And I got to see the beautiful aspect of American society where all complexions and religions live side by side in peace. And as time went on, I had went on to Delaware. I spent some time there with my father. And then uh, my life's journey brought me over to Philadelphia, Delaware County area. And I grew up here, did all my college school. And uh, around uh, 10th grade, the summer of 10th grade, when U2 was out fairly new, uh, one of my brothers from the Sufi order mentioned, hey, do you know about the Freemasons? I said, no, I don't know too much about them. And I, I searched it up on YouTube. That's when it was like fairly new. So mm -hmm. at the time, there was a lot of conspiracy stuff on there. There was a lot of conspiracy stuff. And there was um, 10 other sources which were talking good about it. 
Mm. So I, I had to be able to learn from it in a way. And I was curious. And as time went on, I finished high school, started my business, did all that stuff, um, worked a job. So one day at my job, there was a gentleman who came in from uh, Jamaica. And I saw the square and compass on his hat. And I, uh, I thought back to the idea that it was to be one, ask one. Mm. So I asked him. I became friends with him. And he put me through a rigorous test of uh, being his friend for six months. It was about six, seven months. And finally, he presented me with a, a petition where he trusted me enough. Mm. So I, re I really like that aspect where you have to be a man of your word. You have to be a man of integrity. And you have to be a man of honor. Something that I saw in my faith and in the Sufi order as well. Um, as I went into Freemasonry, I saw that where else in the world can you see where Jews, Christians, Muslims can all come side by side together and love one another? Mm. Where I was sitting with a Christian brother, I was raised by a Jewish past master, and we were sitting there on the level and having a chance to enjoy this life together. And that reminded me of the Sufi order that I'm a part of, where we're also searching for the missing name of God. So we have mm. the 99 names of Allah, and we're searching for the 100th name of God. So I'm like, okay, this, this sounds similar. It's the same thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're all here on the level. When we go to Mecca, there's the perfect Ashler stone. And inside of the Ashler oh, wow. stone, there's the two pillars and, it's, uh, and an altar. And outside of it, no matter what your race is, everyone wears the white cloth to signify uh, the innocence of a man. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, that's similar to the innocence of the lambskin of a master mason, where everyone comes on the level and meets with each other. And the name of that cloth is the Ihram, which if you spell it out phonetically is Hiram. So wow. the connections that I, I got the freaking chills listening to that. Made, <laughs> it, was, it was amazing as my journey took me from one face to another. And I realized that whatever Sufism is teaching me is taught in Freemasonry. And, um, you know, uh, right now I, I represent myself. I'm not representing any Grand Lodge with the things that I'm saying. So as time went on, I challenged a lot of these situations with the Grand Lodge I was dealing with. And that eventually led me to the United Grand Lodge of England after my departure from here. So my Masonic journey has been um, up and down, order out of chaos, black and white tiles. Just like how Batman falls into the cave in the third movie and he has to climb back <laughs> up. I, I, I learned in, in this fraternity, you will face up, uh, up and down in your life black and white tiles and you will face chaos order order chaos but mm. you must never forget who you are what you stand for your conviction and if you can um stay um convinced on that, that then you will have a great time in this fraternity that's awesome and i didn't know anything about that uh, that's no that's fascinating that's yeah we've often said like there's a lot of you know Cross pollination of uh, different yeah. religions, and it's we've often said it's like having the uh, same book, different author, or, yeah. or same movie, different director, yeah, with just different yes. perspectives and different. And there's so many similarities um, that uh, it, it just gives you kind of insight that yeah, they're, we're kind of all talking about the same thing. Yeah, which that, is really cool. Obviously, we don't have, like ascribe to any one religion in Freemasonry. We're not a religious organization, but I mean, yes. I'm sure our listeners know by this point that there is there are some aspects of um, the moral teachings of different world religions baked into Freemasonry, and you can see them in all of the major world religions. And that was really the the question that I was really looking forward to to asking Brother Shake here was, you know, um, what other moral and ethical teachings from your particular religion did you see when you entered the Lodge of Freemasonry? Which ones really resonated with you? Well, the uh, most ones that resonated with me is about being an upright man with a moral conduct and rectitude and walking within the square and the compass. So if you look at the Arabic numbers 787, the 787 is the square and the compass, and that used to be written outside of mm. the Sufi lodges back in the times of the Crusades when even the Knights Templars mm -hmm. and the Assassins, known as the Hashashin, were studying together. Mm -hmm. And they mm -hmm. were taking that knowledge from the east to the west to the west to the east. So our brotherhood has existed since time immemorial. Mm -hmm. And if you look at the Arabic phrase, Bismillah rahim 
which means in the name of Allah, God, the beneficent, the merciful, its numerical value is 787. And 787, it used to be written outside of the Sufi lodges. And if you look at the gematria numerology of the word Freemasonry, it comes up to exactly 787 if you look at the Jewish gematria. So the connections of being upright, uh, being in a state of brotherhood, and uh, being uh, in a state of love and unity is something that's also in the Holy Quran. If you look at the last two verses of Surah Baqarah, which tells you that we make no distinction between any messengers. So in, uh, in the Holy okay. Book, it's saying that Jesus, Moses, Abraham, Muhammad, they were all correct. Peace be upon them all. And that's what basically telling us with the... Um, Surah Baqarah, and with uh, what we're taught with the light of Nur Muhammad. So a lot of people hmm. think the prophet, uh, you know, the prophet Muhammad was just a physical person that came and he died and all that stuff. But there was a light known as Nur Muhammad that existed before the uh, heavens and the earth were created. And, and from that light of Nur Muhammad, all existence was created. So if I realize that in my heart, that you and I come from that same light, and how can I have any hatred for anybody in my heart? We all come from mm -hmm. that same exact source. And that's and, exactly what you know, One of the names of Allah is Allah Had. Allah Had meaning everything is one. I, you, me, your family, my family, you have the same wishes and desires for your family. They have the same heartbreaks. My family has the same. So we're all basically going to the same mountaintop, but different paths. So when a lot of brothers say, hey, I've been to the mountaintop. That's when they have that God realization that we're all one. But everyone's going from A road, B road, C road. But ultimately, we're, we're meeting at the same place. And that's what I loved about Freemasonry is when I came to this country uh, as a child, I used to take uh, Bible classes on the same day. I used to take Quran classes on the same day. I used to go to the Sikh Gurdwara on the same day. And I'm like, everyone is teaching the same exact thing. Why can't we all come together and love one another and make the effort to put our egos down and understand each other with this short human life that we've been given? And that's what my religion has taught me is the aspect of the memento mori, that you have to be ready for death at any time. What Islam teaches about the Nur Muhammad and the light of Allah, that everyone comes from the same light. And to just respect one another and do charity, do zakah, one of the five pillar, pillars of Islam. Be a traveling man with the pilgrimage. So for me, coming into Freemasonry, I just saw it as a mirror of Sufism and Islam. I, I didn't feel um, outcasted in any way. For me, it was it was the same exact thing. That's awesome. That is really cool. Uh, if I can even add to that, I think I've said that multiple times on this podcast that I would love for all religions to sit down and and actually like i don't even know if it's ever done like religious scholars sit down um, unbiasedly and actually try to pinpoint where the stories of religion separated like for instance um i think it was abraham's son you can correct me if i'm wrong but they had he had two sons one ended up becoming um like the I don't want to say the founder of Islam, but he kind of went, the story of Islam follows uh, Ishmael, Ishmael, right? And then yeah. the other son of Abram follows Judaism, or he yes. became the spring point to Judaism. So I find that absolutely fascinating that at one point, all religious yeah, stories, there was a convergence. Yeah, one there was a convergence there. Yeah, it's like a tree, and the closer right. you get to the, the actual base of the tree, right. it all comes back to it except yeah. that except flat earthers nobody knows where they wow. came from <laughs> <laughs> anyway um so let's well, talk that's the that's oh, the ahead. beauty of the grand architect of the universe <laughs> when he told abraham that i will raise two nations from you mm -hmm. so when i sit down with my jewish brothers oh, and i wow. tell them hey you and i come from the same bloodline we're cousins and that's a verse of the holy quran that i had uh, mentioned in my new book that i published and this is from holy quran chapter 2 verse 62 so, indeed, those who believed and those who were Jews, Christians, Sabians, whoever believes in God in the last day and does good, they shall have reward from their Lord. There is no fear for them, nor shall they grieve. So, it does not, a lot of people have a misconception about the term infidel against Jews and Christians. But for us, 
as long as you follow your God and do it the right way and don't hurt anybody, then you have the same rights that I will on the day of judgment. And we will all be in that court of love, peace, justice, and harmony, just like how our brotherhood teaches us. That's awesome. And you, and you mentioned uh, the book. Can you give us a, just a rundown of the, the title of the book, where we can get it and whatnot? Yes. Uh, my new book is The Spiritual Reflections of the Sufi Freemason, Volume 1. It can be found on Amazon in paperback and uh, ebook format. So I was, this is basically most Masonic books, they just get to the, the scholarly aspect of whatever issue that they're dealing with. So my, my book is very like natural and from the heart and to the point, like how I'm talking with my brothers right now. So it's a compilation of different journals that I had written throughout the, like maybe since 2018 up until now. So all the journals, what I did was I compiled them. And I just basically published it in a book. So it just shows my viewpoints on human unity, on love, on brotherhood, on religion. And what aspects can we find out to know that we need to focus on the good and not on the bad? And to teach people that there are good people in every uh, group, religion, and faith out there. And there are also the agents of chaos that spread disunity and fear that also exist in all races, religions, and groups. So you got to be able to focus on the good. It's a battle between good and bad, not about uh, race or religion is correct, because those elements and that uh, fight between those two groups exists on all elements, as I've seen with my recent travels to Pakistan, to England. Most in the West are res restricted to their view of masonry in the lodge room and not beyond that. Hey, brother. But this, can this I just... whole masonry thing, is it goes way above that. Uh, brother, can I just uh, interrupt you for a second? Because I got to take care of something real quick. ESP reevaluation, Masonic hex not equals six six six. Well, listen, if you want to come here and watch the show and you want to be in involved in this, that's totally fine. Uh, but don't be putting up your bullshit on here. Let me just be clear that the number six 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 is actually Sumerian, and it comes from that's their counting system back then, which was demonized by the Catholic Church. So do me a favor. Don't come here with your bullshit. Walk the hell away, or you could actually enjoy the show. Thank you. Continue, brother. Yeah, thank Got you, brother. I bullshit. appreciate that. Sorry, go ahead. Follow along. Yes. Fire uh, away. What I, what I was saying is um, you have this aspect of good and evil and genius and madness, and that, that exists on all elements. I've traveled, I've traveled to these di different lands to visit the Sufi shrines in Pakistan and to visit the elders in Pakistan. And I tell people that their aspect of masonry, what they know from the U.S. or their view in the in a U.S. lodge room, uh, is it goes way beyond that. This brotherhood is not just global, but it's universal, and it's elements of love, justice, peace, and brotherhood. You'd be surprised. I was in the most distant places of Pakistan, where the Sufi shrines were. There were no cell phone signals. There was nothing. But I never felt that I was alone. There was always somebody coming up to me and offering me their brotherhood and help. That's how big our brotherhood is. And that's what made me cherish it so much as someone who has entered it. I had left it and I had re-entered the brotherhood again. And I've experienced it in more than one country and jurisdiction. So it made me value it even so much more by traveling and going through that order out of chaos and being in the dumps and then coming back up. That's all part of being a Mason, and we just we, we should strengthen our conviction at each, at each possible turn, wherever our journey might take us, and choose love and, and not fear. Always choose love through all the good and bad times. And I've, I've spoken to brothers that you must be the better example. Whatever is going on in the profane world, and you go online and fight with each other, you must be the better example to the other people. That, hey, you know, we, we know better than that, you know, not fall into those traps of chaos and division by the agents of chaos who want us to fight with each other. We must be better than that in our example. Wonderful advice. Yeah, and I can tell you, great. right, I'm sorry. I, I just got to say, I got a little Masonic right there. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I, tell you, I felt the blood start rushing to my hands and shit. Mm, and I was getting George mad. Right? <laughs> Random YouTube commenters, man, they're the worst. <laughs> but I will say this, as you've uh, been talking through this, it, it's such an intriguing topic and then something that's truly fascinating. So I just went on Amazon as you were talking and ordered that book. I'll have it on December 27th. But Ooh, I did notice that it's brother. volume one. Is there Are there plans for a volume two? 
Yes, brother. As uh, time goes on and I grow in my age and in my Masonic journey, I will continue to expand to this volume. So for right now, I had my um, YouTube lectures that I was doing, and I was asked by a brother from uh, Bulgaria and a few brothers here from the U.S. that, hey, why don't you write a book? So in order to honor the request of my brothers, I wanted to make sure I put a transcript version out there, too, of a lot of my journals and blogs. And just to have that message out there on, available on all platforms, I'm 28. I'm s still learning. I'm still maturing. And I don't have all the answers to life. So volume one, volume two, subsequently, as life goes on and I'm able to learn more, not just from my journey, mm. but from the brothers who come and offer me their hand of friendship. Joe's 50. He's still maturing. I mean, 48, 48. <laughs> we all have grown to do here. All right. So I got a question for you. Yes. Entered apprentice degree. You're about to take it. You're in the ante room. What's going through your head? It reminded me of uh, being in Mecca and Medina when they also make you remove everything and wear the white cloth only. And that's all you're wearing. You're not wearing anything else. So you're walking around Mecca and Medina. The person next to you might be a, a judge, a politician, a CEO, might be a millionaire, a Saudi prince. But that, that doesn't matter because over there, you're divested of everything and everyone's all meeting on the level under the innocence of the white cloth. And as I saw the uh, Masonic Brotherhood, I saw the, uh, the Brethren of the White Cloth, <clears throat> and I saw the beauty that the grand architect of the universe, in wh whichever appellation or attribution you prescribe him as, it's, it's the same. How in Islam, one of the 99 names of Allah is Al-Basir, and Al-Basir means all-knowing and all-seeing. All oh, wow. So when I, when I saw that, I, it reminded me of one of the names of God. And it also reminded me of being in Mecca and Medina, where I was also divested. So it, it brought back home a lot of things for me to also be humble mm. and to know that we come into this life with nothing. And we will also leave with nothing. Most people all spend their lives thinking about, I'm going to get this degree. I'm going to get this job. I'm going to outdo this person. But what guarantee do I have, my brothers, with all the money I have in my pocket right now that my eyes will open up tomorrow morning? Right. And that's what that's what that moment in Mecca reminded me of. That's what that moment with the EA degree reminded me of that your life, you have it today. You don't have it tomorrow. Just don't hurt anybody's heart because the greatest wealth or how I describe you as a wealthy person is what good did you do for yourself and others? There are many people who might have the so-called material wealth and riches of this world, but their money is cursed. Their soul is cursed. They don't have that peace in their life. So I rather I rather have less, but have that peace in my life, knowing I didn't hurt anybody to get to where I am at. So, <clears throat> oh, Ken, go ahead. Go oh ahead. no, I was just gonna say that's amazingly like that's par for the course for Freemasonry, right? That that mm -hmm. aligns perfectly with the values of Freemasonry. We talk about right. integrity. We talk about not cheating or defrauding our brothers. Sylvani. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I had to take the cheap shot. There are small exceptions to the rule, but still, I mean, these are, these all seem to be, you know, the, the tenants that you're talking about seem to align perfectly with the tenants of Freemasonry. Like I could see why it was so attractive to you. So we, uh, we just, for, just for, uh, just so you know what the hell I dropped the name. I dropped the name, uh, on just a minute ago. We have a fantasy football through discord, which is for our Patreons. And, uh, one of the, the brothers, uh, Jim Delvaney tried doing a little sneak move on it. So I, I had to throw a, a dirty shot. No, you, no, you, had to, you had to throw his name out in I, front of our entire audience. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's it's all in good fun. It's all in good fun. It's all right. It's like 10 people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're number one in the Philippines. We are. We are number sure. one in the Philippines. Um, so I, I do have a question uh, regarding to ritual. Again, we're going to be very, very vague on this, but there's no, um, there's no doubt that or how do I put not no doubt um, public knowledge I guess we can go with that yes. Masonic ritual follows around King Solomon's temple and kind of all that so I, I want to uh, my question for you is, is as a Muslim how do you um, what lessons or what kind of similarities did you pull from that ritual uh, to um, 
to the religious stories to the religious stories that you have followed like one of the things and the the reason why i'm asking is because one of the things again i'm very very big in sumerian tablets we all know this i read the lost book not in stature (laughs) nice i'm very big in the the sumerian tablets and Mm -hmm. i love reading about the sumerian tablets cuneiform tablets and like the stories that you find in the bible or even in the quran Mm -hmm. or even in the torah are in there they're in those tablets so yes. I love the, and that's why I'm asking these questions. I love meshing religions and seeing how stories overlap. So in regards mm-hmm. to the ritual of Freemasonry, what kind of similarities did you draw from your own religious experience? Or well, uh, that, that, that's a great question, my brother. And even going back to the Sumerian uh, stories, the King Gilgamesh from uh, Mesopotamia, modern day Iraq, that's also a Masonic story where he befriends in Kaidu and uh, he realizes what brotherhood is. Then he realizes his own mortality. So Gilgamesh's story is also Masonic. And then jumping to uh, King Solomon, he, we refer to him as Prophet Suleiman, peace be upon him. And he had asked God for one thing, which was the gift of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And the grand architect gifted him that wisdom, which allowed him dominion over the elementals over the over the jinns over the fairies and over the different uh entities that exist in this world which we might see with our physical and non-physical eyes that operate within these realms so to become an adept initiate like prophet Suleiman, you have to be a pure-hearted person and it's about your heart really about how masonry always makes sure is that you're of a good heart and you were a mason in your heart first so it's about you finding that love and uh, basically equality for all mankind within your heart to follow that path of Prophet Suleiman, peace be upon him. And if we look at the story of Prophet Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad was a widow's son. He, yes, he he, when, when, he, <laughs> when he was going through his life, he, he, had lo- he had lost his uh, father. And at the age of six, he had, uh, like, uh, from his childhood up until age six, his father was gone. So as the widow's son, as he lost his mother, too, then he went on to live with his uncle. And that's how his journey took him from one phase to another. And as as time went on, when he started seeing visions of the Archangel Gabriel, his uh, first wife's uh, cousin, Katija's cousin, was a biblical scholar. So that connection between Islam and Freemasonry and the Brotherhood and Judaism and Christianity it's it's all there. It's basically when you're sitting in a classroom and the teacher tells you to uh, whisper something around the circle and one person will whisper the same story. Then the other person will add their own uh, side mm-hmm. to it. Telephone. And then it goes all the way all the way around before it gets back to the teacher. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> we're, we're all part of that same story interpreted since time immemorial, since the times of ancient Egypt. And that, that's uh, another thing about Islam is that most people think that it was um, started in the 6th century. But according to the esoteric Islam, it has been here since time immemorial. What is known as the religion Islam is basically submitting yourself to a higher power. Mm-hmm. So because we're all imperfect creatures and we're all a work in progress, uh, but a caterpillar has to become a butterfly. So our, our, our times of Prophet Moses, Musa, uh, he, he, he was uh, basically implementing the Islamic faith from our point of view. Then he went on to uh, Jesus, uh, Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, then Prophet Muhammad. So we believe Prophet Muhammad to be the Tyler who basically completed the capstone of the pyramid of that religion known as Islam, which is basically submitting yourself to God mm. and submitting yourself to a higher divine power. And by submitting, you know that I belong to something that's greater than me. And I have to make an effort to not fear death, not to fear anything around me. Know whatever is destined for me shall find its way to me. And to see the oneness of mankind and to see the oneness of the brotherhood. To know that we're all walking each other home. And to see how all of these great teachers and prophets that walk the earth. They face trials and tribulations, and they face all these different aspects of dealing with the world. And one of the things that the Prophet Muhammad has said that, which also would make sense to Masons, is die before you die. So die before you die means that you have to cut down your ego, 
and know that we're connected to a higher source and we're here to experience this reality together and find our way back home together. How uh, you have a mineral that goes to a plant, plant goes to animal, animal goes to man, you go, man goes to angel and angel goes back to God. And when somebody passes away, we say to God, we belong and to him, we shall return. We say that because you don't really die. You always exist in some kind of form of energy. And basically it's, um, Almighty God is basically experiencing this reality through all of us. He's experiencing this reality through me, through you. We're all an extension of that divinity of how in the holy books, whenever God speaks, it always refers to itself as we. It's not yeah. I, me, It's always our. plural. It's always we because that's you and I. That's actually we're, what got me. We're on. an extension of that divinity. And that's actually what got me onto the Sumerian tablets when I started reading about it. And I just want to uh, do a, a couple of uh, listeners' comments here on here. But that's what actually got me into looking into Sumerian tablets and looking for, because right in the beginning of you know the, the Torah or even the uh, Old Testament, if you're Christian in the Holy Bible, God, you know, when he created man and he said, let us create man in our image. Who yes. the hell is he talking we to? An hour. Who is he talking to? Again, you could even look at the Jewish name Nephilim. It's plural. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Elohim. Plural. Who the hell are you talking to? Like that's what kind of got me onto it. And I just want to say here, Sodak, Sodak, twenty-seven. I, don't, I don't think religious scholars say things like "Who the hell are you talking to?" But that's how George puts it. <laughs> <laughs> Sodak, Sodak, twenty-seven writes. Okay, I have to ask: Is George a reverse Raph? Raph is balding, and George's hair looks like a reverse of Raph, and he is a midget. Okay, so do you see it? Like, do we know who Sodak Sodak 27 is? No, that's got to be one of our Discord. That's got to be. I think it is. I think I've seen that that (laughs) nickname. Um, Kurt Miller writes, This is so deep. Yes, it is. And you know, I could pick your brain all day, brother. This is freaking awesome. I'm loving this. I soak this stuff up. Well, I'm sure there's a lot more out Um, there uh, in the book that, uh, again, I'll uh, pull up the name. Yeah, pull up the book. And and, uh, uh, it's The Spiritual Reflections of the Sufi Freemason, Volume One. By uh, Salman Sheikh, love for all is the only reality and answer is on the bottom of the cover there. So go on Amazon. It's it's there. Uh, myself and worshipful brother Ken have already purchased our copies. So oh, that's awesome. I'm sure it'll get. Uh, it, it, I'm sure I'll it goes in same. much deeper. And hopefully, when this COVID stuff is over and you were free to to travel about, if you're in Philly, you're only about what two hour train ride. From where we are, it's about a three and a half hour drive. So train ride's got to be maybe two and a half at the most. Mm. Love to have you up here and talk about all this stuff in person. Yeah, absolutely, brother. Absolutely. I would love to do that once things get back to normal. So I have another question for you. Um, To my knowledge, Freemasonry doesn't have too many um, Muslim like rituals or or degrees, Mm -hmm. right? They don't really have that much. I mean, I know they got the Knights Templar, they got York Rite, Scottish Rite Council, all that stuff. Yeah, there's no appendix there's, bodies. There's that are nothing that's. Specific. And I'll be honest, I wish there was, because I believe in every religion or every type of text or any type of. Well, let me be clear. I'm not talking about like Luciferians and stuff like that. I mean, like with any of the ancient main, mysteries that the are main religions, yeah. right? There's yeah. always. I mean, yes. you could even go to to India. The Mahabharata has got all. Oh, kinds of uh lessons to be learned but you can say mahabharata but you can't say shake yeah. <laughs> like, seriously uh, all right see this is what happens <laughs> this is exactly what happens um but i would like I, I would i wish that i mean i don't even know how you would do it but you would obviously need someone like yourself to to go to the grand lodge and be like hey i have this idea for a lesson in muslim to bring to the grand lodge is that something that can be done or is that something you think that you that, that could be done or should be done? There's um, an interesting history that exists between um, our brotherhood. Like uh, you have the American Civil War, my brothers, where uh, brother Masons from both sides, mm-hmm. when they recognized each other, they spared each other's life. Mm-hmm. You have the World Wars one and two where they were hostile enemies. But when they realized he's my brother, they even had watched together in those times. So going back to the Crusades, Saladin and Richard de Lionheart were brothers of the same esoteric order. 
And that's why if anything happened to Richard, Saladin would send horses and aid. Anything happened to Saladin, Richard would send aid. And they would always meet on the level, regardless of the conflict that they were dealing with. Great stories and, between those two. Great stories. Like uh, some of the ones I could think of off the top of my head is when uh, uh, Richard the Lionheart actually landed in Acre. He um, yeah. he ended up catching, what is it called, Camp Fever or something or Camp Disease or whatever. And yeah. Saladin yeah, sent his, his own, I guess, medics of the time over and gave him fruit and tried nursing him back to life. Uh, another yeah. one was... And this is very little known stories because we know how mainstream media works. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But uh, one of the other stories is what they don't realize is that Saladin and Richard the Lionheart actually had sit downs. Um, I don't think Saladin went, but his brother he sent over and Saladin, Saladin's brother and Richard the Lionheart became very close friends to where they were actually going to lay down arms and in the. Uh, and hostilities so that Christians and Muslims could both have Jerusalem. Um, and yes. he was going to marry uh, Richard Lionheart's sister. Yes. And yeah, what ended right. up happening was the sister said, hell no, I'm not going there, uh, which cause she, I think she was in England at the time, right? She didn't want to go over to the Middle East. And she said, no, I'm not going. And the whole deal got <laughs> kibosh. But there was, you know, yeah. people don't realize, you know, <sighs> That's the problem with history. It's always written by the victors or the person's side, yeah. right? That inroads were trying yeah. trying to be made it, between different world religions yeah. throughout history. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. for whatever reason, things never really worked out the way that they But imagine if they had. Like, that, we, we, that's, that, that's the whole know? beauty about it is even Saladin himself was knighted in a ceremony near Alexandria. If you look at the Scottish Rite degrees of the Knight of St. Andrew, and there's a another one that they have uh, about being a knight of the east and the west. Mm -hmm. It tells you how you have to bring the, both of those things in, in your heart. And another connection we have with the Islamic <clears throat> world, with the Western societies, is with Brother Jamal al-Afghani. Uh, Jamal al-Afghani is also referred as a wanderer, as an old man of the mountain. So he, he what they were doing, they had a brotherhood of Luxor. And he was often referred to as Serapis Bay, and he had taught Madame Blavatsky herself. He, he was teaching her a lot of the occult knowledge when she was in the Middle East, and he came here to America with another Masonic brother named Muhammad Abdu, and they taught the parents of noble Drew Ali. Uh, I believe it was the winter of 1882 or 83. So over time, when noble Drew Ali uh, established the first Islamic presence of America, it was Masonic brothers from the East who came here and planted that seed. Just like how you have uh, the Prophet Muhammad depicted outside of the U.S. Supreme Court and Hawaii being the only state in America that has an Islam day every year. So that history is there. But unfortunately, like the brethren have said, it has it's not been taught nope. to the uh, to the systems for us to come together because there are those that control the system that do not benefit when you and I come together. And Correct. help each other. Which means stop knocking down statues, god damn it. You know exactly <laughs> you know who I'm talking to. Stop knocking down statues because you can learn things from them. All right, I'm done. I'm done. Go ahead. Go. <laughs> I had to. Um actually uh, uh Brian Wong writes, as a past master for two years, we should have a lodge that reinstates the story of Richard the Lionhearted and Saladin, Knights Templars, and Sophism. Sufism. 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 I would tend to agree. I mean, there, there's Absolutely. a, there's a Scottish word. Rite degree that talks about, I mean, I'm not a Scottish Rite Mason, but I know enough about... Four chaplains? Yeah. Yeah. And like so, degree. So those same Great. stories, to have another story from a more Love ancient it. time that teaches the same story, I think mm -hmm. is a powerful thing for uh, any Mason to see because it shows that, you know, that, that goes throughout history. <laughs> Even if it's, it's not, not a degree, right? So the New Haven Scottish Rite used to do the, uh, it was an Abe Lincoln uh, dinner with Abe. It was put on by uh, the Scottish Rite, uh, the, the brother died, I can't remember his name, but it was a, it was a dinner and you, it was a dinner and a play, basically. Oh, and it was right. the story of, of Abe Lincoln, you know, and he wasn't a Mason, right. but the, the, there was a certain story. I never got to see it, unfortunately. But there was a whole story about it. But it was a play. It wasn't a degree per se. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Scottish rights. No, it, 
basically what Scottish Rite is. Right? Most of them, yeah, they're players. all players. Yeah. With an obligation. Non, non-participatory degrees. Well, I would love to see, like, like you know, hey, boys, I think there might be a job opportunity for us in this one. Just throwing out there. Well, what are we going to do now? Uh, Richard the Lionheart and Saladin story. We'll have to come up with some sort of a... Oh, okay. Oh, like Put uh, a video up on YouTube for no, that. No, 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 I'm thinking right. actually, like, do, a little, do a little ritual work, right? Do a little degree work. Might play, right? Oh, I We're think, going to like, write our own ritual? Yeah, no, uh, our own degree. Yeah. No, excuse me. Wait, oh, wait, play. hold on. A play. Let me, let me, play. Just, let me play. take my dues card out and burn it right now. <laughs> um, we could do a play and, and okay. put it on a Patreon only. Yeah. Raph, you want to direct that? God. <laughs> no, it's just a play. It's not a, but I'd even like to see something as simple as, and you see it in some lodges, but not every lodge. Traditionally, uh, all lodges have the Holy Bible on the, on the altar. But there are quite a few out there that also have a copy of the Quran, also have a copy of the Torah, and other religious texts. I would love to see every lodge have that, because just symbolically mm-hmm. on the altar, even if you pr- prescribed only one of those religions, mm-hmm. You're taking your obligation mm-hmm. and you've got, you know, when you first get to see everything, I'll, I'll keep it vague on that. Mm-hmm. Seeing those three things joined together. Mm. You're sending a message. Got it. Right away. You're like, hey, yeah. this is this is what we're about. It's all inclusive. There's actually a, a couple good pictures of that that I've seen, like pictures of people have taken of like a Holy Bible, the Quran and the Torah on the altar with all the brothers in a circle around with their hands on it. Mm-hmm. It's a beautiful Maybe picture. I'll buy those for uh, Morningstar. We need a bigger Maybe altar. I'll buy those too, and donate those. Don't bother me. Put whatever we want up there. Um, yeah. I'll check with the worshipful master and make sure he's on board. I agree with Joe on that one, though. I think it's a great idea. So, what, uh, brother, what do you think? You think that would be something that we could, uh, that, that should be done? There should be uh, lessons added from uh, the Muslim religion into. Uh, Freemasonry, like a, a degree or, or of some sort, or a pending body. Yeah, yes, yes, that would be very nice I because we need that more inclusiveness and unity, mm-hmm. as we saw recently with the NPR article saying that why are the new generation not being attracted to Masonry? And we must mm-hmm. show them that we we respect equality and love and justice, just like you do, and that's how you bring in the new guys to show that. This is who we say we are, and we do practice what we preach, to have love, mm-hmm. unity, and peace between all mankind and brotherhood. Where I could sit with a Jewish man and call him my brother. I could sit with a Christian man, a Hindu man, and call him my brothers. Mm-hmm. And if we can do that, why can't the world? So we have to lead by example with our etiquette in person and online, on social media, mm-hmm. in our communities. Because when you wear the square and the compass, you don't represent yourself uh, as a single Mason from a single country or a single watch, you represent the universal brotherhood wherever it might go. So you must always make sure you exemplify yourself at a very, very high level because what, what you do, it all comes back. So you must not be selfish with your character and your etiquette. Always think before you say something and always think before you write something down on Facebook that this might hurt somebody or this might uh, cause an issue. Have that love and consideration, and that would be beautiful to have that inclusiveness of all religions out there. We could take a little bit from Jewish mysticism, from the Kabbalah, from Sufism, from Gnosticism, and add all of that together to, to show that we're all walking each other home, and we all owe this love and light to each other with this short life the Grand Architect has given us. So, a question for you. I, I just want. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I mean, real quick. I just want to key in on something that you said here because I think it's extremely important. I actually had this conversation uh, with the current master of my mother lodge down in Easton, Connecticut. Worked for Brother Mark Zagarella. Shout out to you. Um, where we were talking about how do you package the tenets of Freemasonry to somebody who doesn't understand what it is? How do you how do you gain this new following or understanding of what we do how do you present yourself to the to the profane world and the words that you used peace unity love justice were the exact words that we used Mm -hmm. because those are universal things that everybody every good person uh believes in and the type of people that we want to attract or at least open their eyes to what freemasonry does and i can't emphasize enough like that's peace unity love justice those are very important tenets of not only Freemasonry, but they're also fairly universal. 
Um, and that's, that's the message we need to get out. So I just wanted to echo your thoughts on that because I could not agree with that more. So I have a question, Thank but you, one of the other things I just wanted to say kind of on top of you, if I, if I could piggyback off that is we also have a world right now where everything is polarized, very polarized. It's been polarized for a long time. And I'm not talking uh, politics. I'm talking religion. Um, <laughs> you, you watch the news and you see that, you know, insurgents is the word they use or terrorists or whatever and they're they're people geared toward that and they see this because again let's be clear the media listen to this the media makes money off of your misery nobody yes. tunes in to watch the news to see how many firefighters save cats out of trees anymore no that's they're, why they come to us yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> no, but nobody cares about that anymore when when you, if you compare stories about like something good that's happened and then something bad that's happened. The bad usually gets the ratings. The ratings get those people money. So they keep pumping bad things out there. They also use key words and things like insurgents and terrorists and everything. Not for nothing, but look at the Christian religion. You got David Koresh. <laughs> I mean, you have, it happens, well, it, but it's polarized. You have right? the Crusades, too. You, you know. had the Crusades, right? <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Crusades. Crusades. But, you know, in a, again, that all falls on the narrative that you're being shown. Right. Okay? Yes. So my yes. point, and the reason why I bring this up is because Freemasonry is the original social media. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Show up to a lodge. And I think that a lot of people don't talk you know, they, they don't get to know one another anymore. You know, we, we live in a world where I seen what this guy is on, on, on whatever YouTube channel, whatever. And I, I know everything I need to know about him. You already make a snap judgment off of somebody before you get to know him, which brings me into religion is I wish that. And that's one thing I love is actually like hearing about other religions. Because then I do this whole comparison thing in my head. Like, oh, wow, that's cool. Like what you started off with in this was, was fascinating. Talking about the, and we actually did an episode not too long ago of our 14, well, our, what do we call it? Our bucket list or whatever, of Masonic place. I'm going to go to Mecca now. Like I want to see this, this, I, I want to see that, you know what I mean? The cornerstone and, and all that. Um, ben Blumenthal asks, because uh, you had mentioned before, what brings in new guys to, to lodge? And he writes, uh, what, green beans don't bring in new guys? <laughs> we have a, a running joke about, uh, you know, every lodge meeting when we have d dinners, there's always green beans there. And brings in the Schultz yeah. brothers. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that you mentioned earlier, brother, was that um, in, in the Islamic tradition, it's talked about that, um, that Solomon, who's... Um, a prophet mm -hmm. in so he had god gave him or the grand architect of the universe give him gave him the ability to have dominion over all of these different creatures that kind of sparked something in my memory from a previous episode where we were talking about the fact that king solomon in certain texts mm -hmm. had a ring mm -hmm. yes that gave him the ability to control demons to control demons mm -hmm. yep mm -hmm. yep so yes. it kind of like all these stories are interwoven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's so yeah. cool to me. I think it, it depends. It, it's on two things. One, uh, I've said it before. I, I'm spiritual. I'm not religious. Uh, I believe that religion is created by man. God is you know, believing in spirituality or bring, call it whatever you want. Allah call it uh, God, call it the father of all, call it whatever you want to call it, grand architect of the universe. You know, and again, for instance, I use, and I'm going to use Christianity because that's what I know more about. Uh, they say, oh, the Bible is from God. No, it wasn't. It was from Emperor Constantine. <laughs> yeah. He was the one who put the Bible together, and he left stories out that he didn't want, and he at kept the, the ones he liked. Council at Nicaea, where Nicaea, he, yeah. the Nicene Creed was when they got everything together and said, right. hey, this is this is our talking points. We're going to agree that this is, this is we're going to discard anything we don't like, and this is what we got from going forward. And that's why I, I challenge everybody to, to learn about uh, you know, every religion you could possibly read the books even like the the gnostic books or, or read you know read the the kabbalah read everything because yeah be open-minded you can learn from everything especially read the things they don't want you to read 
Yeah, those, right. are, those yeah. are usually. They say, "Don't read this. <laughs> read it. Read it. Read it." At read the very least, you'll gain an understanding why, whether it be good or bad. Right. Uh, and I think it's very important to to learn from one another. It's a big thing. Yes. Um, I actually have a, a guy, and I'll give him props while he's on. He probably doesn't listen to the podcast, but Omar, uh, he's a guy I work with, and you know, when we say good morning in the morning, I say, every time I see him, I say "Assalamu alaikum," and he responds with uh, "Alaikum salam." Right. Mm-hmm. How'd I do? You did great, my brother. And you Don't have you have a last name. Yeah, but then you can't say your last name. Love. Uh, it, but but it's it's a respect. Like we started off yeah. doing this, and it's it's our own thing now. Like yes. it's my respect for you. You respect from you. Great, great scene yep. actually. In uh, what was it? Uh, Kingdom of Heaven. Yes. When uh, Bloom, uh, what's his name? Um, oh God, the alien. Yeah. I'm sorry, Orlando Bloom. Orlando Bloom yeah, walks alien. up, walks up to 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 Saladin, and he says "Assalamu alaikum," and he responds, responds with "God be with you." And I thought that was yes. perfect. Two religions, just you know, two different. I mean, granted, we're enemies, but we still show respect to one another. And, and mm-hmm. you know, in that they were enemies, meaning in that scene they were opposing one another. But respect between men is is fantastic, you know. And, and these are a lot of things that people don't. I'm kind of going on a tirade here, but. Um, but again, it gets back to the, the universal tenets. So yeah. I believe translated, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's peace be unto you, and then unto you be peace. Uh-huh. Peace yes. is that universal quality that regardless of, of your beliefs, everybody can believe that that's, that's one of the right. foundations. It's funny you brought this up because when we were going back and forth in our conversation, setting this all up, mm-hmm. I sent that to him. Mm-hmm. And you returned it to me also with the definition of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And we didn't even speak about this amongst <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> this was just our conversation, yeah. mine and Solomon's conversation. Just goes to show there's a lot more similarities and differences. Uh-huh. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so where do you go from here now, brother? What's your, what's your next step? Well, what I've been doing is uh, last year I started my YouTube channel from scratch before I wrote my uh, book. Show the plan. And <laughs> what I've been doing is um, I've been making videos comparing Freemasonry to all of the Eastern paths and religions that are out there to show that each one of them are teaching you the exact same thing. If I could go out across a table and I come across a Muslim table that's trying to recruit me to their cause and then I go and there's a Christian t- a table giving me a pamphlet. One person is saying, if you don't believe what I believe, you're going to hell. The other person is saying the same thing. And I'm saying both of you are teaching the same exact thing. So why can't we all come together under unity and brotherhood? As to going back to the media, the agents of chaos do exist in the media where they they don't want us to come together. And that's why I tell people, turn the TV off and get back to nature. If I go outside right now on my American street, I see... A Jewish person, a white person, black person, Muslim. We're all living here peacefully on our street together. Kids go to school together. They work together. We're all uh, preserving our neighborhoods together. So when we come out and see reality with our own eyes, everyone's fine. But when you you turn the TV on, that's when you see the problem. Just like in 2003, when all they were talking about was anthrax, anthrax, anthrax. Nothing there. And innocent soldiers from here paid the price. And innocent civilians from the other side paid the price. Why? Because the agents of chaos at the top could make money at the expense of innocent human lives. So we must turn the TV off and come together as one human family, just like how Roddy Piper did in the movie They Live. In order to defeat the entities, he turned the TV off. Oh man, you just <laughs> Joe, wish brother Joe, who's a huge wrestling fan. Like I just saw his eyes his light ears up. Went, <laughs> I just, I just popped for that. Uh, I just gave that old that Robert Redford meme, and the guy just turning back, smiling, going. <laughs> you know, I'm also the type of person that sees opportunity in chaos. And one of the things I've said before, I think on this podcast before, uh, is when the American soldiers went over there in 2003, right during that whole thing. Uh, the the Iraq War, second one, um, yeah, absolutely did not need to be there. Many people died, but one of the things you've seen coming back, and this brings me, I mean, tie this into the Templars and the Hashishins, as you had said, but you see, American soldiers were coming back with the 
Afghan scarf where they were the, the Muslim scarves and they were wearing them around their neck and everything. So you started, you kind of, I mean, again, I'm looking at this silver lining of the dark cloud. You, you seen a mesh, a mesh of culture, of yeah. cultures starting mm-hmm. to, 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 <clears throat> And that happened between the Templars and the, a lot. the Saracens too. Like Absolutely. that was always there was you know, <laughs> like the, the the common soldier didn't want to fight against the other, you know, the enemy. They wanted to. They were having like a you know cult, cultural, what do you call it? Cultural exchange, basically. Well, this right? brings There's, me into brainwashing, and that's exactly yeah, what happened to many people who went to fight into the Crusades. Is they went out because the Pope told them, "Oh, your sins will be forgiven." Yeah. Yeah. So yep. let's kill a bunch of people, and that'll forgive me. Sense they had really big sins, though. Yeah. <laughs> somehow they outweighed. But like, yeah, okay. I, I mean, could you? I, I, no, I, throw me. I wish there was a time machine to put me back in history because I would be at that council and back. Like, You're all stupid. <laughs> 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 but uh, anyway, um, so you have a new YouTube channel. Uh, what's what's uh, the name of your YouTube channel? For a plug uh, it's just just my first and last name, first Salmon last Shake. Name. We'll be uh, subscribing. My, to my that. main point is to um, just create that unity between all the races and religions out there. Because mm-hmm. when I went to visit the elders of the East in Pakistan, and I had told them one of my life's missions was to reform and unite the Masonic Brotherhood, and they assured me that I would do that in my lifetime, even if it took me my whole life to do so. That's one of my life's goal is to bring the brotherhood together and eliminate that concept that people have. Oh, it's uh, two groups within one group that are fighting each other. Mm-hmm. It's not like that. We're all brothers. We all need to come together and we all re- need to realize that it's liberty, peace, freedom, truth, justice, and exemplify those values for our society right now where we're heading towards a dystopian future where people are just afraid to even look at one another walking down the street. We need that love and interaction back in our lives, and we need to. All the Masonic leaders need to need to start acting like such too. Mm-hmm. Step one is to get your message out there, and it seems like you're doing that by publishing your book and by getting on this podcast. And uh, yes. I don't, you know, well, we're all behind you on that. A couple Whatever, of things thank you, we could all agree on that. You know, brothers need to unite, and we need to accept everybody, except conspiracy theorists. Are you on board with that? prospect of uh, conspiracy theorists who think we're all devil worshippers and baby killers and all stuff like that because i'm sure you get it on your channel as well too right we just no, had- what, what i what i did was in the beginning uh when i first made my channel last year in the first few months i kept the comments open uh-huh. and i realized that some of them do not probably deserve to have that platform where they just come and troll me all the time so i just i just keep the comments <laughs> turned off Mm-hmm. And I keep my email open so that way right. whoever is on and honest enough to ask me a comment or question, they can get in touch with me. Mm-hmm. And with the email, I, I can identify the person because a troll would not use the email to contact me because then mm-hmm. I can catch him that way. Well, uh, we we have a, a, a similar method, but slightly different. And maybe Joe can tell you about it. Uh, we have what we call the nest of vipers, uh, particularly... <laughs> Uh, a bunch of Discord guys called Gang Green. Is that what we call it now? <laughs> they're, they're a nest of vipers. And if you want to learn about the, the nest of vipers or Gang Green, as they're called, how, how do you do that, Joe? You can support us by joining uh, Patreon and becoming a patron of the Freemasons podcast for as little as $3 a month. You will get access to our back to Discord channel. We uh, got rid of uh, what was that? Uh, Slink. What was that the one where Slack Slack? Yeah, we were that. Back on Discord like we were uh, meant to be. So uh for that the uh, Patreon membership, you get the exclusive access to Discord, all of the channels. Uh you'll also receive a gold tone Freemason podcast pin. I hear that supplies are very limited. This uh, <laughs> uh, quite the commodity. Mm-hmm. So uh get them while you can. Again, for as little as three dollars a month, the Freemasons podcast on Patreon. Awesome. I think pretty much everybody's got their pin now. Yes. There's a couple of stragglers still out there. So what we're going to do is, brother, we're going to let you go. But before we do, we're going to toast you in podcast form. So, brother Ken, why, ah, why don't you oh, lead the charge? Yes. Thank you, honor. Thank you, brothers. Brethren, right hand to well, arms. i got to say who, the, uh, oh. who, who we toasted. 
I know we're toasting. You know, we're, we're, we're toasting our brother, <laughs> brother Shake, brother Shake. I was trying to go and screw the last name off, of but it were, backfired. But I mean, he, listen, in his past and continued success, absolutely, brethren, right Thank hand you. to arms, two arms. arms, ready, ready, aim, aim, fire, good fire, fire all, together, brethren. Vivat, vivat, vivat. Thank you, brother. Yes, thank you. I also uh, popped a link to your uh, YouTube channel on our Freemasons podcast page. So anybody awesome. wants to check that out, it is there. I posted the link to the discussion of uh, your response to the NPR article that we were talking about earlier. Awesome. Thank you, brother. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, would... for having me. Uh, may God bless all of you and your families and give you all a prosperous 2021 ahead. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, and one last thing is I would love to eventually, I'm going to have Rafferty continue to keep talking with you because I would love to do more of this, maybe on our Patreon content, have him, yeah. uh, discuss it. Cause this was some heavy stuff and I loved every minute of it. So and we could even put together, uh, of sorts, you know, either, either in person or, um, potentially through zoom or, or some other chat, uh, a round table of sorts, getting these brothers in. I'd love to have him sit down with say, uh, a Jamie Paul Lamb and oh. uh, maybe a few other brothers that have talked about some of these uh, deeper topics and just Scott Walter, him, Scott Walter you know, whoever we can get, get ready. we can get some people in here and have just uh, and I have a feeling that would go on for a while. Yeah, um, no. we're gonna have to break that up into a mini series, <laughs> several episodes. <laughs> but I think that would be absolutely intriguing, like, just absolutely intriguing. Absolutely. Well, we'll keep we'll be in touch, brother. But thank you again, and uh, we'll talk to you later. Be well, brother. Salam alaikum. See you later. Uh, va- you. Oh, yes, I screwed it up. Come on, Joe. Get it right. Come on. I can't talk. I have All the right. George's. Seriously? Dude, that was awesome. Ooh. That was some heavy, heavy stuff. I thoroughly enjoyed that. Yeah, no. It's, I, it, it just goes to gets back to the universality of uh, Freemasonry. You know, so It does bring people together. So uh, one thing I want to say is uh, I'm not going to be uh, I'm going to be non-specific, but we do have a brother who's a Discord uh, member who uh, needs a little bit of help. Oh yes. Yeah, so yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to set something up indiscriminately. Uh, just understand it's for a brother's wife. Um, he he needs a little bit of financial help, as we did with uh, Right Worshipful Chip Schofield. We're going to do with him, and we need everybody who's listening to this, who will future listen to this, to. Uh, Hop on to the Freemasons podcast uh, main page, and we're going to be setting up a GoFundMe page. Uh, this is for a brother's wife who's having issues with her eyes. She uh, she has a disease that uh, has to do with the, the degenerative eye. thing. Degenerative. She'll eventually uh, lose her sight, but there's a lot of things that they can do in the meantime to oh, prolong wow. that. So uh, I've actually been in contact with the Knights Templar Eye Foundation. They could recommend things for me, oh, but they yeah. don't do any more... Uh, patient care stuff. They're more right. of the administrative end of it. But That's I do have some that. links on there that I'm going to be sending this brother. Uh, you know, what is it called? References, if you will. Yep. Uh, to where to go. But uh, we need to get this done. So everybody listening, everybody watching, you know what to do when this link goes up. It's a season of giving. Donate. Do it. Don't be a douche. Don't yeah. Be a douche. Rule, rule number one and two. Don't be a douchebag. Well, that's kind of a Don't bastardization of my rule number one, but it's close. Yeah, that's not quite, not quite uh, there. No, who did that? Remember, who was it? I think it was Dane Cook when he was talking about, remember, he did his stand-up where he was talking about, he had the guy just popping from the corner of the screen. He's like, hello, you can sponsor <laughs> this little kid. And he's like, he's like, what they need is to have a guy in a leather jacket come up be like, don't be an asshole. Like, donate. Like, rather than a nice guy who's all nice, can you please donate? Like, have them like sit on your ass. You go five dollars in your wallet. Donate the five dollars. <laughs> I'm gonna have to find that link, and we're gonna have to put it on YouTube. We'll put it on the community page. But if we only knew somebody that could be obnoxious like that, we yeah. only knew. If only. Uh, Kid needs braces. Uh, F you. Pay me. <laughs> <laughs> uh. If I'm not a Mason, is it okay if I watch? Yeah, absolutely. Most of us. Uh, we don't really know any Masonic secrets. Uh, this is more for um, is, uh, this is Deep 15. Absolutely. You're more than welcome yeah. to watch. Uh, we don't 
dive into Masonic secrets, uh, or excuse me, a Masonic ritual or obligation. Yeah, a little we, bit. we don't get into um, anything that would be no. It's this is just of substance. Us four hooligans talking about what yeah. masonry actually does, and yeah. not the not the uh, whatever. I'm not even going to make him famous again. But somebody was on here yeah. heckling just, us before. Just follow rule number one: don't be an a hole. Yeah, don't. don't that's all we're here. Don't be an a hole. If you have legitimate questions, reach out to us on the comments. You could reach out to us via our Facebook page. Any legitimate questions you have, we will try to answer if we can answer them. There are some that we can't, but just don't be an a hole. And they're all This mason has fangs. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> He's also got lifts in his shoes, but nobody talks about that. I do <laughs> go get your shine box. <laughs> hey, in case you didn't know, I don't shine box shine shoes no more. <laughs> All right, brothers. Uh, we're gonna lock this up because we're pretty much at the hour mark. Yeah, Deep Fifteen. You're welcome to subscribe. Oh, Joe, tell them how to do it. Oh, you can absolutely subscribe to uh, Patreon. Oh, you want on the YouTube? Smash you want to go? Okay, like yeah. Button. Smash that like button and smash that subscribe button on YouTube. This is where you'll get notifications when we go live, which is usually on uh, Thursday nights, uh, usually around six p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and on Sundays, usually around four p.m. Mm-hmm. Eastern Standard. But if you follow our pages will usually let you know about 10 15 minutes before uh if we're going to go live and and what time so yeah uh deep Check fi- us out deep 15 uh, you're more than welcome to watch i mean this is pretty much why we started the whole podcast was to teach people about masonry and why you get joined um again with the exception of joe we want to show that we're a bunch of young guys and we're vibrant and this is what we do <laughs> i steal souls <laughs> Um, but no, the, you're absolutely welcome to to, to uh, join in and subscribe and, and watch us at any point in time you want. Uh, ask questions because we love answering questions. And uh, we're just trying to show that we're average Joes. And don't it. be an ale. And yeah. <laughs> That's it. I mean, that's really the, the ticket price to get in is really, really cheap. Just don't be an ale. Right. <laughs> All right, brothers. What do you say? We shut this down. Shut it down. Yep. All right. Anybody else have any last comments, complaints, concerns? Anything you want to add? No, before we show them. All right. All right. Then for the Freemasons podcast, I'm right. Warshaw Brother George Marjorie signing off. Warshaw Brother Joe signing off. Warshaw Brother Ken signing off. Brother Raf signing off. Have a good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Still live on YouTube, but we're going to shut that down now. Happy Thank- holidays. Yes. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Thanks Happy for tuning holidays. in, guys. Hope you guys. Milik Miliki Mazda Hawaiian <sighs> way. We're signing off. Say Bye-bye. Merry Christmas to you. Milik Miliki Mazda.